Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our Sunday School Recap, Chapter 13. You may have thought we were never going to get through that, but we did. We made it through. This is covering Section D from our study in Sunday School. And, of course, we're still in Bible Doctrine and plan on being there for a while. As we study Section D, we must make note that... uh, or take note, that we're talking about actual sin. Now, last time we talked about inherited or original sin. Today we're talking about actual sin. And in order to understand that, we have to understand very first what Romans 3, 9, and 10 says. It says that, and we'll put it up on the screen for you, no one is righteous. Basically, this verse is saying no one is righteous. What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. Again, that's Romans 3, 9, and 10. So there is no one righteous. All people are sinful before God. As we studied last week, people are born into sin, and therefore, before they even have a choice to sin, they are, in fact, sinners. Now, we've read that in the Scripture. Psalm 14, 3, and 1 Kings eight forty six are other verses that kind of lead us to understand that all people are sinners. Now, the question that came up after that was, are there degrees of sin? Now, it's important that we understand that sin makes us legally guilty, legally guilty before God, okay? And sin, some sins have, um, we could say, worse guilt. John 19, 11 reads, Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. He's talking about Judas in this verse. And uh, there is a greater sin in the sense of guilt. But it doesn't mean that we are greater sinners in the eyes of God. One sin, or the fact that we're born with sin, is enough to separate us. And that sin that we have is is disobedience. We're born with that original sin that we talked about last week, passed down from Adam and um, through the lineage into our fathers and passed into us. The sin of disobedience is actually the sin that's passed in, if you want to get theological. But the fact is that sin covers all sin. We only need to commit one sin to be a sinner. We have sin that we are born into, or it's born into us at conception. And so therefore we know, as we just read a moment ago, that there's no one righteous, not even one. So sins, uh, even though some have maybe worse guilt, or we might consider them worse sins, for example, lying versus murder, the fact is that no sin separates us from God over one another. We'll talk about the unpardonable sin in just a moment, but and that may be where your mind goes to if you've had any kind of um, church, you've been in church or had any kind of training, that might go to that. But uh, while we might see different guilt, we have to understand that there's not one greater than the other in the eyes of God. Again, in my eyes or your eyes, we, we have differences, but in the eyes of God, we're talking about one sin is equal to all sin. Uh, Now, some sins have worse consequences, and that's true, too. Again, lying to me may have less of a consequence than lying to your spouse or lying to a family member or lying to a judge. I mean, obviously, if you lie to me versus lying on the stand uh, uh, and you're under oath, you're going to have a much bigger problem uh, with the court system than you're going to have with me. Uh, So some sins have worse consequences, and as a result of consequences and as a result of guilt and as a result of sins that hurt us more than others, we have placed, not God, but we have placed a uh, a varying level of sin or different levels of sin. And to be quite honest, if you consider the fact that we all have different experiences, you can't discount the fact that some sins to me might not be as bad to you, and some sins to you might not be as bad to me. So the personal preferences or the personal experiences that make those up Uh, Those are where we get the different variances of sin, but God's word never says, and God does not say, that one sin is worse than the other. Now, when a Christian sins, our legal standing is unchanged. This kind of was talking about a moment ago. Our legal standing is unchanged. We don't lose our justification or our salvation. As you remember, justification is that process upon salvation, where we become justified because of our faith in Christ. In fact, Romans 10.9 says that uh, we are justified. Okay, so Romans 10.9 says, for it is by, no, I'm sorry, that's Ephesians. Uh, it says, for if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raises, raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And later on in verse 10, it says, 
for it is by uh, your faith that you are justified. Okay, so we are justified by our faith in Christ as Lord and Savior. Now, justification is immediate. Sanctification is the process in which we, we would call that our growth, and it's the process that isn't immediate. It takes our entire life for us to be sanctified because we're growing, we're, we're maturing, we're learning. Uh, and so that process uh, may be hampered somewhat. Uh, the fellowship with God may be disrupted in the sense that the more I sin, the less I feel connected to God. It doesn't mean that I'm not connected, but it. But I do feel that dryness or that sense of, of uh, what I would call distance that God and I have in our relationship. It disrupts the fellowship. God's not actually distant, but the fellowship has been disrupted. And our assurance of salvation can also be affected then, because it's those times, or it's at those times, that we begin to question whether or not we're even saved. So those are important to understand. But John 10, uh, 10 uh, verse uh, 28, not John 10, 10, but verse John 10, 28 and 29, says, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. He's talking about the sheep. He, in verse 27, he says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Then in verse 28, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one shall snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. And in verse 30, you see, he says, I and the Father are one. So there's a lot of arguments as to who can snatch us out of the hand of the Father. But Jesus was pretty clear. No one can. Now, you can argue that, but it's Jesus. And I don't I don't know how many arguments I'm going to win with. Yes, I do. None. None. So it's important that we understand that no one can pluck them, that being us, out of the hand of God and or out of the hand of Jesus. And because he says, I and the Father are one, you can use that either way or you can put both of those verses together. And you'd be absolutely correct. So though we're not plucked out of the hand of God, though we're not our, our justification or our salvation is not lost due to that sin, the relationship is damaged temporarily, but damaged before repentance because of the um, of the fellowship that we have with God that is disrupted. And um, when we do that kind of stuff, we end up turning people away from God. When people don't see Christ in me, they see the flesh in me, uh, they're not turned to God, they're turned away. And that's extremely uh, bad for us to, to do that to other brothers and sisters in, in faith, but it's even worse for us to do that to those who are lost. We never really know, and we should be aware of this, We should this should bother us, but we never really know what blood is on our hands when we show out uh, around people. And, and when I say what blood is on our hands, what blood could be on our hands uh, from that person seeing us as Christians, professing Christians, acting a certain way, and then that person turning away from the faith and never accepting. Yes, that's on them in some ways. They have to choose whether or not to accept Christ as Lord and Savior. But at the same time, it's on me, because if I'm showing them what the world has to offer them instead of what Christ has to offer, they don't see the need to change. And uh, we talked about the unpardonable sin. And Matthew 12, 31, and 32 talks about the unpardonable sin. And basically, the unpardonable sin is this. It is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Now, that's a biblical way of saying you just don't believe in Jesus Christ. You have rejected Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And when we reject Christ, we reject the gift of salvation. And the gift of salvation brings the, uh, or the gift of salvation, we could say, brings about the gift of forgiveness of our sins, all sins, no matter how you rate them or I rate them, uh, the sins, all of them, okay, can be forgiven. If we say we don't want that gift, we die with all those sins on us. The unpardonable sin is in essence a sin, but in the same time, you could look at it as simply not receiving the gift of sin, I mean the gift of forgiveness. It would be like going to the doctor and the doctor saying, I have this shot that I can give you and it will cure you of your disease and you will not die. And you say, no thank you, I don't want it, and you die. Well, even though we're still going to die as Christians, we overcome the second death, and that's the death at judgment when we are glorified and given our new bodies, uh, or we are accepted or ushered into heaven, the pearly gates. We're not cast into the pit of hell. So for us uh, and for any Christian, uh, they have accepted that shot, if you will. To not accept the shot is is a sin in itself, but it's also just saying, I don't want the forgiveness of all these other sins. And when we do that, we perish. So that's the study on sin, uh, chapter 13, section D. 
And uh, remember, read the first section of, of chapter 14 next week. And if you have any questions, please check with me. Call me at the church. Email me. Uh, you're more than welcome uh, to, to ask questions. In fact, I encourage it. And also, I want to encourage you to check out the podcast. I don't know if you knew I had a podcast going on now, but check out the podcast. And uh, the link is on the screen now, uh, pastorchester.blogspot.com. <clears throat> And click on The Real Deal, and that's where you can find uh, the podcast. In fact, I'll put the link up there, but uh, but it might be a little long now. So um, click on the podcast or go to the podcast. Excuse me, go to the blog and then click on uh, The Real Deal Weekly Podcast. And until I see you again, which I hope will be very soon, may God bless you, may he keep you strong in the faith, and may you walk with your head held high and reject, reject the devil's temptations. Bye-bye.